Hello, people. I'm Jabby Koi, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We're continuing on with watching Sardar Udham. This is part three of our reaction, our final reaction to this film, and also our review. So since you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a cut-down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture-in-picture. Picture. If you want to watch the whole thing with us, uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash where you can watch the whole film with us, but you will need your own Amazon Prime Video subscription so that you can open up the film in a adjacent window to our reaction. Please hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. All right, here we go. Is he just in a dark room? Sorry to report he's refusing all food, sir. We need to stop this hunger strike. How? That's inhumane. They're keeping him in a dark room. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? The hell? Oh my god. That's cute. What is it? Sweets! I had a feeling. You never killed anyone before in your life. What happened that day? So he wasn't even part of the protest. Mm -mm. He was just there. He was just there. For whatever reason, I thought he was younger. Protests have been called at Jallian Walla Bag, but it's likely to be peaceful. But it's going to be political, yes? So it's an unlawful gathering, isn't it? Call for General Reginald Dyer. I want to set a precedent. Punishment of itself is not necessarily a deterrent. But if the punishment is such that it creates a fear of punishment, that would be of great practical value. We need to set an example. Damn, that's like both vague and direct orders. Oh no, it seems pretty clear to me. I don't think it's vague at all. Well, he's not saying like, you know, kill him, but it, well, like, sure. it's, it's to be it's indirectly, interpreted. It's yeah. inferred. She is gorgeous. Oh, she went? Like, clearly she's not around anymore, otherwise he'd be with her. Right, 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 right. Should we issue a warning, sir? They've had their warning. No meetings. Oh, this is messed up. Oh my god. Oh no, stay down. I don't know. Did they kill everyone? Oh 
funny. It's funny. Is she already gone? No? Oh, oh, funny, funny. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Oh, my God, it's like a horror film. He saw and found his lady. No. She wouldn't be able to say anything anyway. to go. <laughs>
He's dead. Hey. Is it done? So I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, so after we finished watching the first part and, and we stopped, you said to me, I think they should have shown the massacre at the top of the movie. Otherwise, I don't have any complaints. After seeing how the movie panned out, do you still agree with your original assessment? No. Or I, yeah, no. that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That was really, really powerful. Really powerful. <sighs> Yeah. I like the way that they 
kind of let us be drawn into the story and let us be drawn into the person because it was kind of like this mystery that was unraveling. I, I don't understand the soldiers that were Indian yeah. doing shooting. That blows my mind. That Yeah, that was wild. But, you know, a lot of Indians were working for the Raj, I guess, and they, they were working for the British Empire. They were trained to work for the Brits and, right. and do their job. It's just so disturbing that they had to, like they were ordered to do that they opened fire on thousands of their own countrymen, you know? It's just so upsetting. And I feel like the director really, really wanted us to feel that because he could have just made it so that it was, you know, just a few minutes, a few glimpses of it, and then no, he really we could the move point on. on. But yeah. he, like, you felt like you were living it, yeah. especially, like, watching yep. the whole situation go down. It felt like a horror movie, you know? Like, they couldn't get out. And it was so surprising because they weren't there with any weapons. That It was a peaceful protest, men, women, and children. And then they just opened fire indiscriminately. It's super distressing. I'm going to assume that the movie is telling the story with as much accuracy as possible. At the top of the film, they did say that, they, you know, it is based on real events, but also based off of documents and yeah, yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm going to assume so, that yeah. as much as possible, they were trying to be as accurate as they could with all the details. Yeah. So anything I say is based off of that notion. That was horrifying. That word isn't even enough to describe what, what, what I was feeling. What? It's just horrible. It's like, how can you do that? Yeah. I don't get it. The strength he had to, like, keep going back it was crazy. Yeah, I know. I feel like after a while, maybe he started to just kind of feel desensitized to it in a way. Well, I think that's natural. Like, I mean, yeah, when you're a doctor, I feel like you go through the same thing. It's just like... Yeah, because even the surgeon, when he had the, the dead child on his table, like, you don't even have time to process your emotions. It's, li it's literally just like, okay, he's dead. I have to move on to the next one that's alive and that I can help right now. You come into the country, you pillage, you take their resources, and then you get angry at them for wanting you out. Yeah. For having a peaceful protest. You're trying to teach them a lesson. It's like, I, I just don't get it. It's it's just so shocking. The whole sequence when um he's going back and getting more bodies. Yeah. They just let it linger. I like that because you felt it, you know? You felt the arduous process of like him going through that and trying to find anyone who's alive still, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it was. It's like it's exhausting to watch. Yeah, and you watch him get exhausted, yeah. and it's like you feel exhausted with him and for him because he's like, how old was he? He was just a teenager, and he's out there, just like in the midst of all the dead bodies, just yeah. trying to help as much as he can. From the filmmaker's perspective, I think it takes a lot of strength as a filmmaker to know how much of that to show. Yeah. I think that this was just a very very intelligently made film yeah because it just took you through the process and you felt everything it was well shot it was well yeah. acted it was well written and these people felt real as far as i could tell like for me it felt real in the past with um english actors in indian films it's like it just it feels cringy and it stands out like they look like they just picked them up off the street which is often what happens yeah and you can tell that Painstaking efforts were taken here to get this right, and I felt it. What I appreciated as well was that, you know, like you said, it felt like a more factual, well-rounded telling of the story. And I appreciated that the villains like O'Dwyer and Dyer were portrayed as evil. And quite rightly so, because what they did was, like, disgusting and horrifying. But then they also portrayed other people that he came across, like other, other British people, other foreigners, who were still you know, more positive, I guess more supportive of him. Yeah, like, I mean, he, I developed, liked he developed a friendship with that, the cop by the end. Swain, yeah. So, yeah. He, he developed a, a friendship with him and then, and then with the lady. And, and you can see how, like, he affected people and also that the message wasn't, like, hate against the British, but it was just like, listen, this is wrong 
and yeah. we need to be free. This is the, imper- you know? the imperialistic. The, Im- the imperialistic rule is yeah. wrong. Yeah. You're making my people slaves yeah. and we need our freedom. Yeah. That was the message and I thought that it was really driven home in a really strong way. The character was just portrayed really well, it, Udam Singh. What does the name of the film imply? Sardar Udam. Is well, that- his name is Udam, right? Right. And then I think Sardar is what they call a Sikh man. Okay, gotcha. If I'm, gotcha. If I'm right. not mistaken. All right, gotcha. Um, so Udam, he tried to humanize O'Dwyer. He tried to seek out some good in him. Yeah. You know, he tried to understand and have conversations with him. It was painfully obvious that this was just an evil person. Well, it, he didn't even really... He had no regret, no remorse. Yeah, none at all. And it seemed like he didn't even really seem to see the Indians that he was ruling as people. They were just expendable and they needed to be taught a lesson and they needed to be put into their place. And so he opened fire on a peaceful protest to, to teach them a lesson. The, the guy they chose to play him was fantastic. Yeah. Because he was very earnest in his ambition in his uh in what he felt was his mission you know it's the burden of the white man oh that made um, me sick like like obviously ugh. yeah that was gross but he as that actor believed that yeah those statements and he committed to it like that moment when udam was considering killing him in his home and he didn't because he didn't want to pay employees in a bad light right the, the help he didn't want yeah. to pay the help in a bad light that scene was great the way that that actor was playing it was great and then the, the way that it was shot as well yeah. was really great because uh, um, you see Vicky Koshal there and he's just kind of like all the emotions are there on his face, but he's trying to keep it together. Yeah. Vicky Koshal is definitely one of the best in the world. His ability to, because like we've been watching him for a while now. Yeah. And his ability to make me believe him as this person, because he is a distractingly handsome man. Yeah. And to make me believe he is this individual, this guy who went through this and to carry that weight for 20 years yeah i believed him you know yeah for 20 years when most people probably would have just given up and been like yeah there's no way now you know the the party is disbanded it's it's dead it's over there's nothing i can do but he carried it on for so long this was definitely a story that needed to be told yeah that needs to be known just like so many Americans, like, they just know Gandhi. They don't know who Bhagat Singh is. Mm-hmm. You know, if you were to ask any random American, do you know who Bhagat Singh is? They, they have no idea, but they know who Gandhi is. They know that name. That's global, right? Yeah. Not Bhagat Singh. And his name should be known as well. You well, I, I think what's really great about this film as well is that, I guess for lack of a better word or a better explanation, it's just like, it's done in a way that I feel will reach out to an international audience. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, it's it's more palatable for people who are used to Hollywood films and who might not be used to a more Indian or Bollywood style of telling stories, right? Like, there were no musical numbers in this. It was just like... but it was also not glamorizing anything. Exactly. And, And I feel like that's a great way to go about it because then people who maybe stumble upon this on Amazon... Um, and are like, oh, what's this? This looks interesting. They can really get drawn into the story and learn something about history that isn't taught in the history books necessarily. Oh, I certainly wasn't taught about it in my history classes. This might be my new favorite Indian film. The way it was handled was gracefully done. It was very, yeah. t- it was very tastefully done. It was so powerful. My face was hurting from how much I, I, I was wanting to, like, I was crying, but, like, I was trying to just, like, focus on the film, because I knew if I started to, it was just going to be, like, a waterfall yeah. or a dam busting open if I let it go on too long, so I had to hold back. When you're shooting this stuff, you, you can't just pause whenever you feel like, yeah. right? And so I'm, like, having to hold back so I can concentrate, and it was, like, hurting my, it was hurting my face, because I'm trying to hold back from crying, because I just so badly wanted to just start sobbing. Watching that last hour that yeah that was that was rough and to be to be honest with you it was like borderline too much for me and i think at some point it's almost like i had to switch off my emotions because it was it was like so intense i think you feel exactly what he was feeling over the course of yeah I was just like, oh my God. Like Like a lot of the shots that they were doing during the massacre of like limbs falling off and stuff like that. I was just like, oh my God, this is horrific. 
but like absolutely right, rightly so because no, it was yeah. horrific but the stuff that really got to me was more of like on the smaller scale of just like families and children like yeah. that one that one scene where the grandfather was like my grandchildren my my granddaughters are behind me mm-hmm. they were dead but they were holding hands and i was just like oh my god like i can't and then he yeah. lied to him to give him hope and then he dies you know and i was just like oh god this is just it's too much well what they did here is something that you don't generally see in film except in maybe korean cinema which is they showed the children getting killed yeah and you had to because it happened yeah because it happened yeah and that's the thing to drive it home to really show how sick this thing was yeah anytime people kill people is awful, right? But we can understand it in the context of war because it's like they agreed to be here. Uh, they're here to fight a war. It's still horrific, but, you know, it's adult males or whatever. But these people were not there for that purpose. They were there for a peaceful gathering. Yeah. And obviously with women and children being there, they thought that it was safe to do so because no mother in her right mind, no parent in their right mind would bring their young children to anything like that if they knew that they could get hurt. And so it was just like a huge shock to everyone there. Yeah. When I The thing that you started this conversation off at the top where I was like, I, I, I felt like they should have shown that massacre at the top. Yeah. It's because I had no idea how long it went on for. Yeah, because like, you thought that it would just be like a shorter flashback and then you would see his adventure, like his story right. into getting to where he was. Right. It's that in my mind, like I could never think in a million years that these soldiers would just keep firing. Yeah. Like the people are trying to crawl out and it's like m- monstrously ugly. They just keep firing and there's no escape and they just keep firing. And it's like, it's horrible. Yeah. And so well, that's why... I, you know, I didn't understand what I was talking about initially when I said it should be at the top because it's like the storytelling here was very elegant. Yes. You know, it's, it's all um, nonlinear. And I think that's how the story needed to be told. The back and forth. It's like because sometimes people do that as like a, a method of telling the story just to keep it interesting, like because they feel like, you know, being experimental. But here, right. just like as a reference, Christopher Nolan's Memento, that's how that story needed to be told. It was the most effective way to tell that story. And I feel like here, it's the same thing. This is how the story needed to be told. It was the most effective way to communicate it. And that lingering shot of him at the end when he comes out of the water of just like what he's wearing on him, like when he's trying to wash this blood off, he's trying to wash this pain off. And it's like, no, it's just the blood is still on him and the, the trauma is there. Well, you know? I wonder as well about the significance of that, because I feel like we, we probably lost a lot of understanding because we don't know the history, we don't know the culture. But from what I'm aware, Amritsar is a very, very holy place for the Sikhs, right? Mm-hmm. And I've seen images, I've seen videos of people washing themselves in that water. And I imagine that it is a very, very holy thing to be able to do. Yeah. And then here he is in that, like special water trying to wash the 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 blood the death the trauma off him yeah and even with all of that like he still can't you know like you said you know he's still bearing that weight of everything that he just witnessed and so it's like you can't wash yourself clean i don't know if that's the symbolism of that at all i think i'm just kind of like grasping at straws here because i I I don't really know the the significance you know absent of understanding that i think that it's just a human thing yeah if you witness something like that you're the aftermath of your brothers and sisters gunned down and you can't even find the woman that you love i kept waiting for that like I, I, the masochistic part of me was like i just want to see that well the thing that i love that they didn't go hollywood and show that right because he didn't find her so don't add that for our sake you know it's you know what i mean it's it's like he just he didn't find her in all of that chaos he just never he could never find her body and it's like that's even worse you don't get to have closure because the whole thing with burying someone isn't... It's like we say it's out of respect for the body, but it's not really for well, them. It's for the person who survives. Right. And it's like, so they can have some closure. Really, if you think about it, like a funeral is for everybody who's surviving, not for the person being buried. Really. Yeah. And and he, is, he doesn't get that. He's denied that. Like, because it, it was so it was so horrific. Like, we, we're very hyper-focused on that last hour, understandably. Yeah, because we but, just 
lived through it. But, <laughs> you know, the film does an excellent job of taking you through this process and you understanding the character. Like in the first 15 minutes of the movie, he doesn't really even say anything. You don't no. hear him talk at all. But, like, you understand that there's weight. That's the thing that Vicky Koshal brought to this. Yeah. Is just this... 2,000 pounds of weight, emotional weight he's just carrying with him everywhere. He, he definitely you did know? his homework. Yeah. You know, like he, it felt like he had lived through that and that he had been carrying the weight of all of the people massacred there yeah. for the past 20 years. Yeah. His accent was perfect, I thought. I mean, I don't know what Udam actually sounded like, but for, you know, in my experience of interacting with Indians who, who barely have a grasp of the English language, I thought he did a fantastic job yeah. of handling that accent. Well, yeah, and not only that, it was like, because we've talked to him. <laughs> we know. Well, yeah, he's stellar with, with yeah, English. We know yeah. that he's really great at conversing in English, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, he did a really great job as someone who could not express himself really well with the words. However, you understood his intent completely yeah. through his actions. Yes. Like, nothing was lost there. It was yeah. incredible acting. I, I want to really applaud the producers and the, the casting, casting directors, everybody involved, and the director, I would imagine, involved in selecting the talent for the film because too many times have I watched Indian films where, like I said earlier, where the English talent is just, it doesn't feel authentic as much as the Indian counterparts in the movie. Right. You know, it's like that all that's all taken care of. But just like when we watched Squid Game, it's like when they brought in the English talent, it was like, oh God, that's horrible. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so here, by being more conscious of choosing really good talent for everybody, it allowed me to just be immersed in this story completely in whole, you know? Well, yeah, because I, I feel like you were you were able to, like, just get into it because they felt like real people. Yeah. And I like that the, the filmmakers gave these characters the opportunity to be well-rounded because, I mean, I'm not just saying this because I am British. It's always awful when you watch things about your countrymen have done that's, like, super awful, right? But the fact is, like, we're all human. And so it's just nice to see even the negative characters kind of portrayed in a way that makes them feel three real, dimensional. three dimensional, yeah. as opposed to like, you're the villain in this. And so you have to play this like you're a pantomime villain. I mean, no doubt. I agree like, with you 100% on that. Yeah. Like yeah. I said before, like th the way that that they portrayed Dyer and uh, O'Dwyer, yeah. like, yeah, they were awful but they still felt real. And then I liked that with... With those uh, two names, you'd have thought that this story was written by J.R. or Tolkien. <laughs> so close together, it's So weird. close together, yeah, you know? I know. And with Swain, the, the constable, I think, from Scotland Yard, you get to see how Udam Singh managed to, like, change his mind, you know? And I liked that they kind of gave an inkling of that in the beginning when, like, says, oh, take him away, and then he listens to him getting tortured, and you can see that he's... That's not something that he enjoys, yeah. you know? And so it's like, oh, okay, this guy's not a completely awful British person, you know? I, yeah, no, I agree with you. Making everybody as much as possible that at least is a prominent figure in the story, uh, three-dimensional, I think that's a fantastic aspect of this film. I think that if I had any criticism at all, and it's not really criticism, it's just more of like, oh, I wish they did this. And in the epilogue, I wish they said the effects of Udom, what his actions did for India. I mean, the film did a really good job of showing us, but like in all that text, we watched a story about him. And yeah. I, I want to know what that action did for India, did for Britain. Like what was the effect of that after he dies? Kind of like, like at the end of Braveheart, right. like you see what happens after William Wallace. I mean, that's fictional for, for in, in certain regards, but like you see the effects of what happens after William Wallace dies um it invigorates the the scotsman right yeah and then in 300 gerald gerard butler's character dies you see it invigorates the um the spartans. the spartans right and so i wanted to just know in some small fraction some small way i mean maybe the point is that it didn't it, di it didn't have any yeah reach maybe that is the point but th i wanted to see that right or have something say like he's the hero that we forgot or yeah something like that yeah i guess yeah maybe i mean maybe maybe i'm as i talk through it i'm, I'm understanding why they said what they said and that was enough but the length of the film was not felt yeah um i think that the length was perfect because 
you know, I've watched two hour movies that feel like four hours. Yeah. Like this was perfect. It was just the right amount of information, the right amount of feeling, the right amount of lingering on stuff. Yes. Um, it was shot fantastic. The music was, it was scored fantastic. The random scene with the free speech thing and the and the derelict was great. The, yeah. The little moments. I, maybe I would have loved a, a couple more scenes with the, the girl that he met, the communist lady. Uh-huh. that sort of helped him out. Maybe a little bit more between them to understand like how, how much they care for each other. That would have been cool to see. But Maybe they were just friends. I want to know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to know that with certainty. I don't want any doubt. And so that's all that might have been missing from this. But like at this moment, it feels damn near perfect. This might be my new favorite Indian film. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I also want to point out or highlight the scenes with Bhagat Singh. I thought that they were done really, really well because yeah. like... Oh, he did a great job too. Also, Amol Parasha, fantastic yeah. job portraying Bhagat Singh, like such a legendary character, right? Up until this film, Ajay Devgan was like the image of Bhagat Singh in my head, right? Yeah. Ajay Devgan has just an older look to him, an, yeah. old, an older presence to him, naturally. And, and Bhagat Singh was a young man. And, um, exactly. Yeah. And so choosing Amal Parashar was actually a fantastic choice, in my opinion, because he, he just, he has that young, the guy was 23. Yeah, he was 23. Like yeah. that, that scene where he was like, what were you doing when you were 23? And then yeah. like Swain has that really lovely recollection of like how happy he was when he was 23. He's like yeah. married and having a baby. And then Udam Singh is just like, well... Yeah. don't talk about Bhagat Singh yeah. then but like you realize like he was such a great guy but also I loved all the little kind of behind the scenes stuff where you get to see their friendship how close they were because they're much... human beings yeah, and, yeah but like that last scene as well I'm running, yeah. of them running yeah. I was just like yeah they were kids Yeah, you know like it, it just brings it home like dang he was so young yeah you know and, yeah. and like I think when someone's a revolutionary you kind of forget that yeah but it's like at his heart, he was a young guy. I feel like I need to qualify my statement that I made a few seconds ago. So with regards to Ajay Devgan, he looks like a grown-up. And he's, yeah. ever since everything I've seen of him, he's always looked like a grown-up to me. The American equivalent that I can use as, as a reference is like Jonathan Majors, right? The guy's only 32 years old. Oh, he doesn't look it though. Yeah. Everything I've seen him in, he's always looked older. Yeah. And that's some people just have that sort of presence about them. They just yeah. look like they've got wisdom on their face. And yeah. uh, Ajay Devgan is a man who looks like he just has wisdom on his face. Where Whereas Bhagat Singh, that they describe him, I'm like, no, he's, he just seems like a young fellow, though. Yeah. Who was, and he had he was this, like full of ideas yeah, and spirit. And he had this mission sort of thrust upon him. Yeah. You know, and just like Udam, it's like when he came out of the water, it's like now this is his life. He woke up and so many of his brethren were dead. And it's like now this is your life. Yeah. Everything that came before doesn't matter. Like now this is it. Like this is your mission now. And it's just crazy. Well, and also speaking about age and portraying younger characters, I thought that Vicky Koshal did a fantastic job at kind of running the whole gamut. Yes. From yes. playing a teenager. I literally, when I saw him in that scene, it took me about two scenes to realize that it was actually Vicky Koshal. Oh, yeah, totally. I thought that they had cast a teenager or like some other young He looked young like a guy. completely different person. He looked completely yeah. different and I completely bought him as like however old he was supposed to be, like 16, 17 years old or whatever. I was like, yeah. yep, I buy it. Yeah. And then because he goes through the whole thing where by the time he dies, he's in his late 30s, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's well, he, incredible. Well, 1899 to 1940. So if he was born in 1900, he'd be 40. Okay, so, so 41. 18, so 41, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. This is approximate, right? We're not math. So, no math. Yeah. <laughs> I I thought this was fantastically made. It tugged on my heartstrings in a very very powerful way. Yeah. I actually, while I was when the scene where he, after he dropped off the boy was finished, I was like, could I ever watch this again? Because it's so much. It's so heavy. But yeah. I, but it's so powerful though. Much like Schindler's List is one of my favorite films of all time. Like this is up there with it. You know. Yeah. Like this is. It's just. It's important. And it was beautifully done. Yes. Beautifully shot. Yeah. Like, and watching the scenes as well, I was kind of thinking about the way my dad used to describe the England that he knew gr growing up. Yeah. You know, like a lot of the fog and the snow. Like my mm. dad used to say that, you know, sometimes when he would go to school, it would be so foggy, he'd put his hand up in front of his face and he wouldn't be able to see his hand. Yeah. And I never experienced any of that when I was living in England because global warming, you know, that doesn't really happen as much anymore. And so I yeah. thought that the way that they portrayed it, the way it looked and everything was just really, really spot on and it was really beautiful like they paid so much attention to the period all of the posters and stuff and the background 
around. I was very, very impressed. You guys take care of yourselves. Yeah. Stay safe. Peace out.